This is Giulio. I am CTO and co-founder of my platform. Today, I want to speak about platform engineering. I start from the platform. What a platform is? When you, have a, you are a company, you are count more than one team that are creating more than one application, maybe during creating the application, that application can share common aspects. What is an aspect? Is a capability like the identity manager, a process, a life cycle management of your application, also people, and for sure, a lot of time also infrastructure. These common aspects can be named a platform. Then a company that adopts a platform creates a common place where people comp and developer teams are working together to create application, reusing uh, common aspects like infrastructure, like a developer lifecycle uh, tools, uh, like a common capability like uh, API gateways, uh, uh, file service uh, manager, and so on and so forth. Who is in charge to manage the platform? The platform engineering. The platform engineers are people that are with the goal to simplify the life of developer teams in a way to provide a self-service developer experience secure and reliable for all teams that are working and focusing on building great applications for their end users. Today, I want to speak about my experience that I gathered from several different teams and I put in seven blueprints about the platform engineers. We, we, I identify seven moments in the life cycle of the platform, starting from coding, quality management, shipping of the coding, operating the application in production, fine-tuning the application, improving and collaborating all together. And from my point of view, this is the platform. These all events are, in, in, are inside the platform and people are, is working together to create application and collaborating uh, to, to improve uh, the, the users and the value that is the outcome of the platform. Let's start with the first one. The first one is a focus, a focus on coding. And before um, explaining the coding part, I want to explain the, that card. I create, a, in the blueprint, I create a, that card that help to categorize uh, some aspects of the blueprint. The moment name on the left of the top of the card, who is involved uh, in that moment, uh, which, which are the necessary skills, which is the outcome expected from that moment uh, and which are the aspects and details about the moment. And also I put some technology example how to implement uh, uh, this blueprint. It's just an example. There are uh, uh, tons of technology in the CNCF landscape. Just for simplify the presentation, I put just some example of, of that. In the bottom, I also add some techniques uh, highlighted to improve uh, and implement uh, the blueprint that I propose. Start from the first one, coding. Who is involved in the coding? For sure, developer team, software architects, operation teams, and the skills are, that are needed, uh, coding, uh, architectural, software engineering, business analy analysis, uh, security and privacy, and test engineering are for sure skills that you need uh, during the coding phase of your application. The outcome of the, that coding is the great value, great business value for the end user. Which are the main aspects of coding part? First of all, to define the business goal. All line of code should focus on create the business value for your users. You have to understand if uh, your application is a B2B or B2C, if the application provides API events, is a user interface application, is a B2B2C application. If you are creating a, a end-to-end -end application uh, uh, with a mobile and websites or a package business capability that can be reused by other teams like a payment integration, integration gateway. And uh, you have need also to define metrics to measure your business goal, like a business transaction, failure, success rate, uh, count rate per second, uh, money, uh, and so on and so forth. The other part, uh, before starting the coding, uh, you need to identify the, your architectural style, which is your preferred architectural style to solve the problem that is, uh, that is for your users. Uh, you may choose microservices architectural styles, 
microkernel. You may need to manage a distributed transaction or not, and you, you may need to manage asynchronous communication with a PubSub. You may publish events, API, data. It is up to you to define, but it's important to agree about the business goal and the architectural style before starting the coding. Then you, have, you need to choose the best, the best, the preferred technology, languages, frameworks, library to implement your application. And then you can choose your runtime because you can target a virtual machine, bare metals, you can target Kubernetes or container manager service or serverless solutions or a mix of that. The other important part is that uh, your code, your source code, does it, needs to store data, uh, retrieve information, process uh, data streams, and you need to identify the external services and uh, that are related to your systems. If you, are, you need to uh, get data from your legacy system for your mainframe, or you need to access to some API sites, you need to implement an identity manager provider, it's up to you to define, but it's important also to be aware about the external system dependency of your application. Last but not least, this uh, secure by design, privacy, then authentication, authorization models, sensitivity, data sensitivity, and the policy of management. It is important also to implement something that verify that the policy that you have defined are implemented by design inside your code. Okay, this, the part of coding is not simple, I know, and there are a lot of techniques that help you to implement that, like uh, domain-driven design, extreme programming practice, uh, even storming uh, uh, OWASP guidelines. You know, also Scrum and Kanban help you to implement uh, uh, that kind of uh, techniques because help you to identify better how, which is the main goal of the team and focus on the value and not on technology. Second, quality. You know, quality is important because the outcome of quality is the guarantee that uh, the value is generated is constant during the time, not just the first time you release the application, but also during the time. And test, implemented testing in, at the beginning of the project and maintain testing is important. You may implement unit testing, integration testing, system API, regression testing because sometimes it happens that you, have, you, you fix a problem and you open a problem that has been fixed before. Dependency. You know that uh, a lot of applications include open source, and maybe that open source license is not compliant with you. Then you need to also verify that part, compliance of the open source license, and also the verification dependency vulnerability is important. Otherwise, you can open up problem of security, just including a dependency that is uh, corrupted by outside uh, your control. Security, security testing, sanity testing, penetration testing are very, very, very important because uh, if you don't uh, implement a security strategy at the beginning, uh, after you are is very, 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 very uh, stressful for the team and costs a lot of money to fix the problems in production about security. Performance, maybe you, you target uh, just a uh, thousand people or million people or, or more than 10 million people that are really using your application, depending on the usage of the application, maybe depends also your architectural, your strategy of scalability, uh, and how you want to verify that your application is uh, uh, provide the same quality for the user, even if there are 1 million or 10 million people that are using the application. Then load testing, stress testing, scalability uh, is are important. Several techniques also here, like a user scenario, continuous integration, test automation, as important to implement that practice inside the quality. Third, shipping. Now you have coded, you have the quality verified, you want to ship your artifact in production, you need a checklist, maybe verify the dependency, the precondition to go in production. And if you have a rollback strategy, if there is something that has go wrong when you go in production to roll back your application. You may need an approval process or not. It's up to you to define it. It's up to you to define the approval process. It's up to you to also to automatize that if this is possible. 
rolling out a strategy. Maybe you want to adopt a master uh, trunk-based approach with feature flag, then every time you release the master branch and uh, you enable just with a feature flag uh, the feature, or you want to uh, test uh, uh, using a release with using Nubin, a rolling update, can release, there are a lot of options and you need to understand which is the best for you. Delivery, you know that uh, in my opinion, you can go in production only if uh, there is something on Git uh, and you cannot go in production without uh, that uh, uh, manually. You, you need uh, to use Git as a source of truth of your production environment or not, and also for not production environment. That GitOps is a main pillar you cannot, uh, it's important to adopt GitOps and that you have, you need to, have, you have main issues of, between two approaches, pull and push. Push means that uh, you can apply using a pipeline a configuration to your runtime environment, like apply YAM file to Kubernetes. Pool means that you can define that your cluster observe your Git, and every time the Git change, the cluster automatically align the configuration on, uh, to starting from the Git uh, repository. Production testing. When you go in production, uh, is not the end, the end of story. You, uh, you need to understand if your application works properly in production because it may change the data, may change the, the sizing, may change a lot of things between production and not production environments. Then if you implement automatic testing in production that are continuously run and try to understand if there is a problem, is an important part for the quality of the, your application. Continuous delivery, continuous deployment, product management, also for sure techniques that help you to implement uh, uh, improve shipping. Operation, operating, when you go in production, then you want to operate your application. Then you may have infrastructure automation, environment as a service. For sure, you need monitoring and system alarms to verify the status of your application. And when, if you have a problem, you need the logging and tracing. Otherwise, you are blinded about the problem that is happening in production. And uh, last but not least, uh, if you are not able to understand from logging, from tracing, uh, for monitoring, uh, you maybe you need to go to debug directly your application on the cluster. I suggest to don't do that, but it is a it sometime absence uh, happens. And uh, if disaster happens, uh, you need a strategy for disaster recovery. Then uh, the idea to, to manage disaster recovery is important. You may use a multi-region, multi-zone approach, and you also you can use a predictive uh, analysis to reduce the, the case of disaster of disaster of your system. Fine-tuning. You, you want to focus on reduce the cost and keep sustainable. Then you can manage your cost. You can manage the fine-tuning parameters to for a source consumption optimization. And uh, you may approach also with custom engineering experimentation to fine tuning your application and improve the reliability of that. The sixth one this is important, improving. Then you have a lot of metrics, you can analyze the metrics, you can apply metrics to your DevOps strategy, and you can apply agile retrospectives, code, code ownership, more programming to also improve not just the technology and the application, but also how people are communicating together. And gather feedback from people is important part for improving your processes and your application. There are also techniques uh, from host leadership, uh, retrospective like Sailboat uh, and Starfish, uh, extreme programming, uh, Link Coffee. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of techniques that you can adopt for improving. Collaboration is important to collaborate together. Then an internal developer platform portal can help the team to collaborate together, improve the communication. A catalog can be useful to share the co common path to create uh, an application. And uh, you can compose uh, data, API, products uh, together to create a new application. And you can discuss about uh, how to improve that application using uh, a discussion uh, place. Uh, and uh, for sharing experience, asking for support, provide feedback, suggest new features. Community management, developer relationship, uh, platform and content creation, content uh, open, inner source governance as 
one of the critical capability to improve the collaboration, the foster the collaboration on, on all your platform. Final remarks. The idea of platform is that uh, with seven aspects, coding, quality, shipping, operating, fine tuning, improving, collaborating, you can uh, improve uh, your, your, uh, your presence on the market, uh, your client to market, uh, you can reduce your cost uh, and you can improve also team satisfaction. But uh, for sure, you please uh, start uh, gradually, implement uh, just a small part of that, uh, measure and adapt. Otherwise, uh, uh, maybe you fail because uh, it's not just a question of tools, but it's a question of people, people and processes that may change in your organization to have a lot uh, more, more value from that approach. If you have some question, please uh, ask me on Twitter and uh, go on the website uh, of your platform. You have a source of a list of technologies, uh, tools, uh, and uh, white papers inside, outside the, the organization to understand better how platform engineers work and what is our platform. Thank you for your time. See you.